So the PlayStation 5 got an update today that allows you to expand its storage with an NVMe SSD. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys three different ways of how you can expand your storage. There's the right way, there's the wrong way, and then there's the Tetra Ninja way, which kind of borders between right and wrong. So let's get right into it. So I really appreciate Sony's approach to expanding the storage to the PlayStation 5, unlike the Xbox Series X, which requires a first party expansion system, which in terms of price to size ratio is fairly expensive. With Sony's PlayStation 5, you basically can pull off any Gen 4 NVMe off the shelf so long it has the speed capability. Slap on heatsink like what Sony recommends just to help with the heat dispersion on the device and pretty much you are good to go. If you're on the fence of exactly what SSD to get, I recommend the one terabyte size. That is the best budget to performance ratio, the most bang for your buck. In terms of compatibility, IGN has actually posted an entire article of what SSDs are compatible with the PlayStation 5, fully compatible that is. And the ability to expand your storage has been available to PlayStation 5 software 2.0 betas for a couple weeks now. So pretty much everyone has tried everything in underneath the sun. Pretty much the two SSDs that everyone is recommending is either the Western Digital SN850 or the Samsung 970 Pro. Really in terms of real life performance, you won't know the difference between the two unless you go to actual SSD testing benchmarks. It's pretty much the exact same thing. I myself went with the Western Digital SN850. You actually can buy it with a built-in heatsink, which if you want the plug and play, no hassle solution, I do recommend. But if you do decide to go to a little bit of a more cheaper and economical route, uh, you can also buy it separately and then buy a, a little bit of a cheaper heatsink and then attach it yourself and install it. But I decided to go against the grain and I actually installed it onto a heatsink that is not quote unquote compatible with the PlayStation 5 because it's actually very chunky, it's very industrial, and it's actually a little bit too big. This is the Sabrent uh, heatsink. What I like about it is I want my SSD to stay as cool as possible. So I decided to go with an incompatible heatsink. And today I'm gonna show you how to install it. So to open the expansion slot, you wanna make sure that the disc tray is upright. Uh, on the top and then what you want to do is very carefully and gently I've already pre-done this a little bit because the first time I did it the top tray actually went flying because I applied too much pressure <laughs> but you want to lift on the ends and then slowly slide over to your left the disc tray and that will give you the access to the SSD expansion which is right here as you can see there's already uh, dog hair because I've already done this once I also do recommend that you do the software update to your PlayStation 5 first before installing the SSD because what happens if you don't do the update first. When you power up your PlayStation 5, it'll pretty much say that there's a foreign module uh, that's been attached to the system and it basically will not start until you remove it. So make sure that you do the update first before you actually install the SSD device. So yeah, so you will need a hobby size screwdriver um, to remove this very nicely decorated PlayStation 5 branded screw right here. All right, so we're gonna take the SSD and we're gonna fit it directly into uh, the slot. You'll hear a very nice, satisfying click when things are engaged correctly, as so. And then what you wanna do is take the screw without uh, the riser in this specific, cause it has like a little bit of a riser attachment as well, as you can see right here. Um, you will not be using that with this uh, with this heatsink, mainly because it makes it so it is it's basically too high. All right, so now that the SSD is in there, uh, we have to reattach the screw. So with this specific heatsink, the screw will actually not go all the way flush uh, into the socket just because it's so large. Uh, but once again, we're doing it the wrong way, the touch of ninja way, just so we get better heat dispersion uh, with uh, this heat sink. So you'll see that it is protruding just a little bit, but we do get it enough so 
the SSD will not be sliding out back and forth. I would recommend that you save these pieces, uh, put them in a very safe spot because eventually I do predict that there will probably will be a PlayStation 5 Pro in the near future. So if you want to take this expansion slot and move it to your next system, uh, you want all these parts so you can kind of put everything and have everything all together. All right, so now that our incompatible heatsink is in there, the moment has come to see if this thing will actually close. And I know it does because I've actually tried it already. Uh, so just replace the lid, make sure that the hooks are beneath where they're supposed to slot, slide it in, and you'll hear a nice satisfying click when the PlayStation 5 closes. Like so. All right, so all that's left to do is to plug and power on your PlayStation 5, and we'll jump to the menus here. And as you can see, we have successfully upgraded the storage of the PlayStation 5. This was a very welcome feature, finally available to the pub public, because I was very quickly running out of space on my PlayStation 5. If you guys want the links to the heat sinks and SSDs that I recommend, you can check out the link in the description. I'll give you guys all the three options, the right way, the wrong way, as well as the Touch or Ninja way of upgrading your storage on your PlayStation 5. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one.